Hey everyone and welcome back to Cruising in Matthew and today I'm going to be talking all about the newest cruise line to enter the British cruise market, Ambassador Cruise Line and in this video I'm going to be talking all about their ship and also what you can expect on board so I really hope you enjoy this video. Now it goes without saying that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on the cruise industry and as a result not all the cruise lines have made it to the other side with lines such as cruise and maritime voyages going into administration and this resulted in the loss of some fantastic ships such as Magellan, Columbus and also Marco Polo which were all sent to the scrapyard and this really left a gap in the British cruise market and this gap is being filled by none other than Ambassador Cruise cruise lines which is going to be the first British cruise line to start up since 2010. Now this cruise line hopes to start on the 6th of April 2022 on board their flagship Ambience on a four night sailing to Hamburg from London Tilbury and between spring 2022 and 2023 Ambience is going to sail exclusively from London Tilbury and will visit 88 ports across a huge range of destinations such as the British Isles, Fjords, Arctic, Iceland and as well over the winter months visits to places such as Cuba, the Caribbean as well as Scandinavia. Now what I think is really interesting is the fact that they plan to, beyond 2023, to offer embarkation ports from places like Newcastle and Liverpool. Now Ambassador's cruise experience is something that they describe as traditional, authentic, friendly and aimed largely at the over 50s. That being said, they are going to be age inclusive, however for the vast majority of their sailings they are going to only allow people over the age of 18, so the ship is going to be largely adults only, with the exception of what they call multi-generational cruises which will take place over the summer holidays and kids can come on board. Now with this clientele in mind the entertainment and dining is very much going to be aimed at the over 50s. Now Ambassador Cruise Line really seems to be wanting to offer a traditional cruise experience and just allows people who want to enjoy a more relaxed cruise. They hope that their smaller ship is going to create a sense of community and they hope that friendships will be made between passengers as well as the crew and I think that's quite a nice touch because that's something I always enjoy doing on a cruise is making lots of friends with the passengers and also some crew members as well. They also have a focus on solo passengers and they state that on six nights and above they're going to have special programs which means that solo passengers will be invited to things such as a welcome party at the beginning of the cruise so you can meet like-minded travellers. Now onto their ship and ambience is derived from the French word surroundings. This very much reflects what ambassadors want ambience to be about you're going to have really nice relaxed friendly surroundings where you can enjoy your cruise now ambience started life as regal princess way back in 1991 having been constructed by Finn Cantieri at their Monfalcone shipyard in Italy she was named by none other than Margaret Thatcher of all people and she made many happy memories during her time with princess in 2007 regal princess was moved to P&O cruises Australia and was renamed as Pacific Dawn. Now originally she was due to leave the P&O Australia fleet in 2021 to join Cruise and Maritime Voyager's fleet as Amy Johnson. Sadly this didn't occur and following the collapse of CMV and the ongoing pandemic P&O Australia announced that they were going to remove Pacific Dawn quicker than expected and very much facing an uncertain future. Now for a very short period of time she was going to be renamed Santoshi and acting as a cryptocurrency cruise ship off the Gulf of Panama where she would host a floating community and this fell through and by December 2020 it was almost certain to be scrapped. However, luckily for her, she found a home with Ambassador Cruise Lines and is destined to have a new lease of life as Ambience. She can be considered in today's terms as a medium ship weighing in at about 70,000 tonnes. Now for P&O fans, that is similar to that of the late P&O Oriana. She'll also have the ability to carry 1,400 passengers and 23% of the cabins will be balconies and all the cabins are going to be cleaned once a day with a daily turndown service with room service offered at 
at an extra cost. And being British, there is going to be a tea and coffee making facility. There's also things such as a dryer and a fridge as well. There'll also be a flat screen TV and a number of these cabins are going to be able to accommodate a total of three or four passengers in these cabins in the form of a drop down Pullman style bed or a sofa bed. There's also going to be 12 accessible cabins on board Ambience and 40 with connecting doors for families or friends going away together. And in a commitment to their solo travellers, they're going to dedicate 89 cabins for solos at a 30% supplement. Now, as we all know, food is a huge part of the cruise experience. And from what we know so far, there is going to be breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea and dinner included within your cruise fare. And if you're wanting a more formal sit down meal, there's going to be the main dining room known as the Buckingham restaurant, including up to a six course gala meal at dinner. So that will be lots of fun. Breakfast and lunch are going to be open sittings in this venue, whilst dinner is going to operate under a first and second sitting. Note, as far as I can tell, there will be no freedom dining, so that is a nod to their adherence to a traditional cruise experience. If you're fancying something a bit more casual or you get hungry between meals, which always happens with me, you can go to Borough Market and this offers a variety of food in a buffet style eatery and in sunnier climes or in colder ones, if you want to hold on to your food, you can also visit the Alfresco Grill. There will be two extra charged dining venues on board and that is going to be Saffron, which is going to offer Indian fusion style dishes, whilst there's also going to be Sea and Grass, which is going to offer things like steaks and other the grilled options too. Now if you're wanting to celebrate an extra special occasion or you're wanting to do something different there's also going to be the chef's table which Ambassador State is going to be the ultimate culinary experience on the ship with a VIP dining experience which has been designed and hosted by the executive chef so that seems like that will be really interesting indeed. There's also 11 different bars and lounges offering a range of entertainment options on the ship as well and these include places such as the observatory which is situated right at the front of the ship above the bridge and will feature cabarets as well as a late night disco. Alternatively, you can also go and enjoy shows at the gorgeous looking Palladium, which is going to span over three decks. You'll enjoy some fantastic shows in this area. There's also a number of other bars such as Raffles Bar, as well as the Botanical Lounge, SW19, and the best named venue on the ship, the Purple Turtle Pub. And it really looks like you're never going to run out of places to go for a drink. And they all seem very different in style, which I really like because it means that if you're in a particular mood you might be drawn to a certain venue. I especially like the look of the observatory because I can imagine you'll get some fabulous views although naturally I would have to try them all for cruise blogging purposes of course. Now I'm really intrigued about the fact that Ambassador have also stated that there's going to be other entertainment options such as speakers as well as classical interludes so I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen but I imagine you're going to have things like harpists or string quartets and that'll really really give a nice grand sense of occasion to the day and I really like that style of music as well so it seems perfect for me. The centrepiece of ambience is definitely going to be a three deck high atrium known as Centre Court and around this area you're going to have things such as shopping gallery, photo gallery as well as things like a shore excursions desk and reception as well as the ambassador casino. One area that I'm really interested in has to be the coffee house and I imagine I'd spend a lot of my time on a sea day having a nice cup of coffee and watching the world go by. In keeping with their traditional experience they're also including things such as the aces and eights bridge and card room and that isn't something that's seen on modern ships these days so a lot of people will be happy about that and there's also Bronte's library. For the more active individuals amongst us or if you're wanting to work off those cruise calories there's going to be the active studio and gym and also the wellness spa if you want a bit of pampering. Now from the exterior shots of Ambient it really looks like she's going to offer a fabulously large range of deck space and she's going to offer two pools as well as four hot tubs and there's going to be a large cinema screen near one of the pools which will allow you to enjoy a film in the day or potentially in the evening or you can keep up to date with the latest sporting events. One area that I have to say I really like the look of has to be that tiered aft and I would definitely try and grab a sunbed in this area listening to my music and reading my favourite book. 
So in terms of pricing, I would say that it looks around the price of, say, a Piano Cruise. Now, the fares are split into either the Fair Maiden fare. This offers 25% off your drinks package as well as onboard credit. And then you also have the Ambassador fare, which features the onboard credit. And you will also get the premium drinks package, which essentially covers all your alcohol, other drinks, wines, teas, coffees, things like that, as well as a guaranteed dining preference, priority cabin upgrade if it's available, and things like gratuities as well. And if you're wanting to buy the drinks package separately, they offer it in three different stages. This is the experience package, which features the gratuities as well as non-alcoholic drinks, and you'll get unlimited soft drinks in this package. As a rough ballpark figure, this is around £16. Now the Explorer package offers the same as well as house wines and spirits, as well as 50% of any premium brands that you have, and this seems to be around £30, whereas the Expedition package includes includes everything and this will tend to be around £35. Now there is some variation depending on the length of the cruise, that seems to be what you can expect. Now Ambassador are going to offer a gratuity system which is added automatically to your cruise fare and this will mean that you have to pay £6 a day per person per night which drops then to £5 per person per night if you're on a 16 night voyage or more and this is automatically added to your onboard account and this will also include service charge. If you use the drinks package, this is automatically included. So something to consider. Personally, I really like the fact that Ambassador is almost booking the trend with other cruise lines in the fact that they are retaining that traditional, more formal aspect of cruising because the vast majority of cruise lines, with the exception of lines such as Cunard, are very much moving away from the idea of formal nights and a traditional cruise experience. And although some aspects have been retained, a number of lines have definitely watered it down over previous years. And that's understandable because not everyone wants this. However, with the loss of lines such as Cruise and Maritime Voyages, it definitely left a big gap in the British cruise market, which Ambassador is certainly going to fill. For me, I love the traditional cruise experience experience, so this is definitely a line that I want to try. It is important to note, however, that although a number of the people involved in the running of this line previously worked with CMV, this is not a carbon copy or a recapitulation of that company, and they very much state that it is completely separate. It is a completely new entity with a different ethos, so although some people may find similarities in CMV, it is not a replacement. However, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this cruise line shapes up and how the ship looks when we get more information. Naturally, the information may change as things go on, but I hope you found it really useful. So I really hope you enjoyed my video talking all about Ambassador Cruise Line and their first ship, Ambience. If you have, please like and subscribe because it's always appreciated and take a look at some of my other social media sites which are in the description below. I can't wait to see you all in my next video and until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew and thank you so much for watching.